I think if you kind of just boil down what is fine dining and at, at its core, it's like an obsessive attention to detail, even the most inane and, you know, often unnoticed details, you know, that a customer would never perceive. But your, your hope is that the collection of all these details that you're paying attention to is what delivers the fantastic experience. And that's, to me, something, you know, that fits my personality, I really enjoy, and I think what makes the food good here. I'm Eric Huang. I'm the chef and owner of Pecking House, uh, located in Brooklyn, New York. This is the face of concern. <laughs> the face of... Ooh! <laughs> All right, that works. <laughs> First piece of fried chicken in this. <laughs> it's a little worried, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Peggy House is a uh, restaurant that was created out of trying to help my uncle out in the pandemic. We started this September 2020, but the food was a really neat distillation of the kind of cooking I grew up with. We describe it as Nashville hot chicken meets Taiwanese fried chicken. And because we use a lot of pure starches, like an Asian fried chicken, like potato starch, corn starch, that stuff gums up really badly. So to get like a really crisp, airy crust, you really need to like immediately add the dredge. I never <laughs> expected this concept to go viral. It genuinely was just trying to make a little bit of scratch just to help my family pay the rent at the restaurant. It had been closed for six months since lockdown. This weightless chicken that spawned from it, this like very coveted delivery chicken that was uh, all the rage in the pandemic was absolutely unplanned. I, I, I genuinely never really thought this was gonna happen. I was just trying to help my family out. It is a really unusual and unique style of chicken that didn't exist, which is why uh, another reason I think it really took off. Hi, Mom. <laughs> How are you? Nice to have you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Eric is my son. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> Eric is a very bright kid, very difficult kid. <laughs> He always has a lot of, lot of his own mind. That's why I probably make him so good now. When he decided to be a chef, he told me, and he just graduated from Northwestern University. So I said, why didn't you tell me earlier? I saved 350,000. <laughs> <laughs> Their kitchen at Pearl East, it's tiny. Considering how much food comes out of here, it's really crazy how tiny it is. <laughs> My mom's always in the kitchen. She's watching every dish come out. She's yelling at people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, I was, you know, here basically every day helping out as much as I could. So it was a pretty crazy time. This is a chicken shumai, four-color chicken shumai. A lot of really finessed, intricate work. Chef Lo, he's been working as a dim sum chef since he was, like, a young kid. He's being very nice. He's saying I have some finesse and delicacy here. I disagree. I'm decent at making the shumai, but the, the swan-shaped dumpling is real hard. <laughs> and, like, he's, he's probably made hundreds of thousands of these things at this point. I was surprised he wanted to be a chef. When he was young, he did nothing else but McDonald. <laughs> Which is not great. It's probably why I was such a large child. A lot of KFC, <laughs> Taiwanese fried chicken. You yeah. know, like my grandma would make like the little popcorn chicken stuff with the five spice and the sugar. Mm. Uh, and so that's, that's really where it came from. You know, a country style fried chicken that you'd get at KFC, but there's elements of, you know, the Taiwanese and the Sichuan kind of cuisine that was you know, all throughout this building. As you can see, the tail is not elegant enough. Mine's a little stumpy. <laughs> you know, even though we were arguing at times, this was really fun to do. You know, I learned a lot. You know, it was like doing a kind of cooking I'd never really done before. I mean, I obviously grew up with it, but I had been cooking in Western Michelin star kitchens for 10 years, you know, and I hadn't been able to get back to my roots and do this kind of cooking. And it felt like kind of starting over in a lot of ways. It's very, very different from Western cooking. I was not fast enough. <laughs> but I can work the grill. Give it another coat. So in the beginning of the pandemic, there was no chance my mom was going to close. Of course, she was going to keep working. 11 Medicine Park was closed, so I asked him to come help. Luckily, it for, because of Eric, we can open. You know, I, I worked really hard in fine dining for a really long time. I wanted to be the best, but like there was no one really working here. So I came in and tried to be the chef. It's very busy. It's not easy. A lot of people, <laughs> they can't handle it. She disapproved of my plating, replating. Do it over, chef. 
So we're making soup dumplings really challenging. As you can see, you're supposed to pleat it in this very beautiful way. That's what makes this place really special to me, you know, and I think special to the island. It's just like, there's not a lot of people who would put this much care and work into it, you know? Uh, you know, she raised us as a single mother, and, uh, you know, her resilience is really incredible. Yeah, I mean, she's been working seven days a week for like 40 years. Do you like fried chicken? I love fried chicken. Who yeah, doesn't like? I love Everyone fried loves fried chicken. chicken. And I think his fried chicken is very good. Eric has a very good sense of the seasoning. Uh, I tried out a bunch of different things, but you know, I, I think a lot of people are always like, how'd you come up with this recipe? And the simple answer was like, I was looking around me and see what I had. You know, of course, we had five spice, there was mustard, and then there was chilies. It just kind of all came together one day, kind of all came together in a vision. All right, chili mix. Okay, so this is a giant container of ground chilies. We grind them ourselves, they're Tianjin chilies. It's like a medium heat and it has a very nice like vegetal aroma. And then these are Sichuan peppercorns that we toast and grind ourselves as well. Yeah, it's a numbing sensation. Some people describe it as licking a nine volt battery. I've actually never done that. I, I wouldn't say most people use vinegar powder at all. <laughs> I wouldn't say common, but this is something that you would find more in like a high-end kitchen, like in fine dining. So you need a decent amount. And this is where all the sniffling and the misery begins. Okay. All right, moment of truth. It's been really hot lately, so I'm a little nervous about it, but. Oh. Too hot? No, it's okay. It needs sugar. <laughs> oh god, I gotta do it again. So you just added more sugar? Yeah. Yeah. What are you All right. looking for? It just needs to be <laughs> balanced between the sweetness and the vinegar. We mix it with duck fat and we form kind of like a chili oil. And we brush the chicken with that. And then if you're doing it right, it should be pretty balanced throughout and not overly hot, but on its own, without the fat, without all of everything else going on, it's really hot. <sighs> okay, that's good. <laughs> all right. All right. Wow, Lassa. <laughs> this is so hot. <laughs> Just go to the office and cry for a second. <sighs> okay. I would not have chosen such an ambitious project for the first one, but it just kind of worked out that way. I do really like the space. I think the location's sick. It was really fun to be in a Chinese kitchen and be able to play with flavors and ideas. And then the first time I cooked it, we were like, oh wow, that came out pretty nice. Our menu here is, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty homey and pretty approachable. Uh, they're all heavily inspired by traditional Southern cooking. I think, you know, being in restaurants really brought my, me and my mom a lot closer. She never it makes me have to ask for help. She's always offering. Well, I live for my kids, I have to say. And uh, I work so hard just for them. Do you think one day you want Eric to take over this place? <laughs> I don't think Eric going to take over this place. He wants place. to, but I, I would not. <laughs> Final moment. It's a big test. She tests everybody on their fried rice. She judges them by their fried rice. Hi, Kayma. Pretty good? Oh. Not bad. I nailed it, maybe. <laughs> Learned a lot from my mom about how to run a business, and yeah, it's really impressive. <laughs>